Welcome to the Modular Clubhouse. I'm Jesper, and this is the Genelec 30 ATC. <laughs> so the AD 30C by Genelec is part of that 8000 series, and it's essentially a, a range of active two-way monitors, and. This is essentially the, the middle of the road solution within that range. Uh, so they start at the 8010, go all the way up to the 8050. And then of course you also have the 8020 and the 8040. So middle of the road. And this one has been provided to me for the, well, for the sole interest of filming this, uh, this review by Audio Technica Benelux and uh, Janelec, of course. So I do have to thank both of them for uh, making this possible. Unfortunately, I do have to return them, um, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm actually not really wanting to, but uh, more on that later. Um, so I would say, well, hope you guys are sitting down. I'm just gonna do the exact same thing I've done for the other reviews of studio monitors. Uh, so don't expect any well, real technical analyses, uh, but more my personal feedback and my personal take on these monitors, if, that, if I compare them to some of the others that I've had the chance to review over the course of the last couple of months. So make sure you're sitting down, have something to drink, have something to eat, um, kick your shoes off, whatever you like, because uh, here we go. At the cottage window, a little bird sang, and the lights of the window did flicker. And look, the roof up it sprang, and the cottage became a house bigger. Look, into a world the cottage grew, and the vast and wide too. And filled with song was the air, and like new was the sun's flare. Um, don't get me wrong, I, um, I didn't overnight turn into a poet or anything. Now this is actually the, the warranty card, you might say, that's included with the uh, Janelec 8030C. So I'm, I'm then assuming that they include this, or something similar, with all of their well, all of their loudspeakers. Um, this is actually a poem by a Finnish poet called Eno Leno. I'm probably, I do need to apologize, I'm probably butchering that name. And it's included in both English and in Finnish. Um, so I'm not gonna try that. I will probably ask someone to uh, to read this for me at one point so I can understand the, the true Finnish uh, cadence within the, within the actual poem. And, the thing that I like about this, because this tells me a bit about the philosophy that uh, Janelac has and how they approach their their trades, you might say. Um, and so they, they do say, we wish you broadening horizons and new shades of sound. And yeah, I, I, I love that. I, uh, I can't applaud them enough for doing those kind of nice little things. Um, you do, of course, also get your uh, quick start guide and you can then, of course, get the full manual online. You can download it. Um, I might make some references to that here or there. Um, but first things first, let's have a quick look at the speakers themselves. Um, so uh, as you can see, I've got two of them right now. Uh, I do have to return them, unfortunately. And I mean that because I am really in love with these things. Um, so before we actually dive into the actual, well, the sound that these things are capable of producing, uh, let's talk a bit more about the, well, let's call it the, um, the practical side of things. So let's have a quick look at the actual size. So um, the thing is approximately 30 centimeters tall, or if we use the official measure of this, uh, channel approximately a Volker and a half high and probably two-thirds of well three-quarters of a Volker wide and if we then turn them 90 degrees approximately well about the same depth as well um, that being said let's talk a bit more about the actual um, drivers that we've got so here we've got the the base one and that is approximately 13 centimeters um, in diameter. Um, so that would be approximately 5.1 inch, if I'm not mistaken. And here at the tweeter, that is 19 millimeters, so almost two centimeters. And that would then be, well, um, three quarters of an inch probably, but still 
these things pack a lot of punch. So let's talk about the rest of the enclosure. So the well, the defining thing for Janelac monitors are these curves. And well, I I love it when the things I, I work with have curves, of course. And Janelac has actually great reasons uh, to, to, to do that. Uh, on the one hand, it's for the aesthetics, of course, but more importantly, uh, they design these to minimize any of the edge, well, um, reflections you might get, and therefore making sure you get an even cleaner sound out of these as well. So they look great. Um, they do that for a good reason. They sound brilliant. More on that later. Um, other things to talk about the actual uh, exterior, uh, you do have your power indicator, which actually makes a lot of sense to have that. Um, and let me tell you all about that. So if we then turn this around and look at the at the back, you do have, of course, your uh, uh, your base channel there. And let's see if we can get this on camera the right way. So here the actual fun starts. So what you can actually do is you can, um, uh, you can of course turn this off on or off by hand, but what this also has, has ISS, uh, which means that the monitor is intelligent enough to notice when it's being used or not, and then of course turn itself or on and off. And I think that's that's such a handy thing, especially in today's day and age when we do need to think about the actual well, environment and reducing our, uh, our energy footprint. So I love that. Um, right next to that, you have your dip switches to set the, well, I always like to call that the, um, yeah, how, how should I call that? The compensation for placement of, well, of these, these, these monitors. So you can set them, well, depending on where you place them in your room, if you place them, uh, completely independently, you don't have to do anything. If you place them on a desk, you might need to flip some switches. If you put them in an untreated room, you might want to change some of these as well. So I'm just gonna put up the configuration on screen here so you can actually see uh, what each of these does. And then if we look at, so the, and then the, the other switch here, of course, is if you want, want to disable ISS and just only depend on the power knob to turn it on or off. So I'm just gonna, hold it like this so you can actually see the power connector and the XLR connection there too. So the actual placement of these did make connecting them a bit harder, but uh, once you've got everything set, um, then it's an actually a great uh, way to make sure that your, 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 your cable management is nicer this way than with, well, um, well, perpendicular connectors, I might say, because you, you can actually use any of the room that you have there. Uh, but you do need to keep in mind, if you use longer XLR connectors, then you might need to uh, keep that into consideration. Uh, mine haven't been any sort of problem, but I did see some longer XLR connectors uh, previously, so uh, do keep that in mind. Um, same thing is, of course, true for your uh, power connector, which I haven't seen longer versions of, but uh, yeah, who knows. Um, then, while, we, while we're here, uh, you can see the, well, the actual ISO ports. So this is something I, I truly like about Genelec, is that they ship them with these, what they call ISO ports. So this is probably more well, rubberized, or it's some, some sort of a plastic, or you might say it's very, well, it's, it's quite durable, it feels quite sturdy and you can then move this around, around the bottom of course, and then you can make sure that you can actually position your monitors and angle them as well. And by using these, you don't need to have any sort of monitor pads or anything else that you uh, want to include to minimize any sort of vibrations. So you can of course also just mount them on any sort of uh, microphone or a speaker stand and uh, you can actually also move the ISO ports to any of the sides as you can see there so I do I don't want to drop this as I said I, I've got these on loan <laughs> so that's just a quick tour about the um, the outside and the exterior of the Genelex AT 
30C. Um, let's see what we want to talk about now. So um, I've been testing these for a couple of weeks now and I, the thing I, I compared them with are of course the two other sets of monitor speakers that I've been uh, I've been using over the course of the last months. So uh, that was on the on the on the other hand that was the PMC Result Six and the uh, Mackey. What was it called again? The Mackey. CR4 XBT. So if I then talk a bit more about where I want to position these, well, these are of course from a from a pricing perspective. Um, I think you can actually buy five of these uh, for one of the PMC result sixes. Um, and I think that you can buy two full sets of the Mackies for just one of these. Um, so just to understand a bit of what, what the prices are, how they compare. And I think that from a quality perspective, I that these, these these obviously these blow the Mackies out of the water. Um, I have probably never heard something so clear coming from such a small footprint device like this. And then of course, if you then compare it to the to the PMC Result Sixes, I. And I'm, of course, I'm an untrained professional in these sort of things. I do this uh, as an enthusiast. I do this as uh, as a hobby, and I try to make an honest um, uh, enough comparison. Uh, yes, of course, I did hear differences between the Genel X and the Result Six, but those differences were really small and I do have to say that I had the feeling and again this is something that I can't corroborate I can only talk about this from my own experience and say that the the PMCs were a bit clearer or crispier in the in the higher regiments where I feel that these channel X they they dominate the the lower end of sound and that was something that I was very surprised with after working with the the PMCs and the Mackies and now with these these Genlex, that I was like, okay, well this this has a lot of oomph in the in the lower regiments, and I was I was I was surprised and well, and 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 pretty well as well. So that's something I truly enjoyed about these from a sound perspective. And I did of course play with the with the dip switches at the end, and I did find what worked best for the position that I had, and I will actually recommend everyone to uh, have a good look at the manual and then use the recommended ones first and then just tweak it a bit to see what works best in um, well in, in your situation um, so then the question becomes well how did I use these so I had these connected to my modular rig I have used these with uh, several audio interfaces. I use this with the Focusrite 2i2 uh, fourth, uh, third gen. I use this with the Rode AI1 and I use this with the Arturia Mini Fuse 1 as well. Um, as said, I haven't had any... I couldn't hear any differences. I did that just to be thorough, of course. And I really like to combine these with my modular setup because there I want to, on the one hand, have a very clear and uh, natural sound coming out of my rig, so I know exactly how I'm recording it, and I can then, of course, do all kinds of equalizing afterwards, but I first want to get the the cleanest sound or the most, or the best mix in ahead of time and then I can work with that afterwards. What I truly liked about these Genelex is that they offer me a bit more, well, <laughs> desk real estate because they are quite small from a, from, from a real estate perspective, um, but they also made sure that I could really pinpoint exactly what was going on in my patch. I could hear nuances uh, that I haven't 
heard before and that is exactly what i was able to do with the with the pmc result sixes as well uh less so with the mac keys but still those have been uh, have been great to use there too um so the question then becomes is who would i recommend these to um i think that if you are serious about your synthesizer journey your your rack journey your modular journey um, there will come a point when you will need to invest in well, a, a, a good set of monitor speakers and if you've got money to burn um, yes of course you can of course go for the result sixes um, but if you're on a tighter budget uh, but still you want to get something that's really good for your setup and you really want to take well your recording and your patching and your sound design your soundscapes seriously i can honestly recommend these genelex 3080cs um for for a couple of reasons uh first, first things first so they are big enough that they can truly encompass and um your your, your whole sound uh experience so uh, I've never had a moment when I thought, oh, I just wished I had a bit more uh, power there or I, I wished I had a bit more bass. Um, if you are, well, susceptible to, to those kind of things, you can, of course, uh, look into some of the other Genelacs in this series. So there are the, uh, this is the, the, the 8030C. If you want to go bigger, you can go for the 8040B or the 8050B. But if you want to go smaller, you also have an 8020D and an 8010A. Um, this is, of course, right there, smack in the middle. And I I would actually consider picking up a set of these myself. That is, that's probably like the best thing I would say. Um, and this is, of course, something that I'm going to be looking into as well, because I'm able to, uh, to, to, to well to use these to review these and there will come a time when i will need to make a decision and decide okay well what kind of studio monitors would i pick up so next thing i'm going to be reviewing after these are going to be the krk classic fives um, so they are just a teeny tiny bit uh bigger than these from a from an from 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 an external perspective but they've got a pretty similar layout when it comes to the uh to the drivers uh but again they are uh, significantly cheaper than these uh, so i'm curious to see what happens there and what my different how i would actually well experience that difference too uh, so for now i would say well let's uh, go back to the studio and let's wrap this up thanks so much cheers so I hope you liked this video on the Genelac 8030Cs. Um, so this was actually the third monitor review video I've done. Um, as you know, I've done a video on the PMC Result 6 and I've done a review on the Mackie CR4 XBT as well. Um, I will have upcoming videos on both KRK, the, the Classic 5s, uh, but also the new Kali Audio uh, LP series will I be reviewing in the uh, the future um, so please let me know if you have any specifics you want to know about these um, these monitors going forward uh, monitor reviews are of course a new thing for me but I do enjoy do uh, working on them uh, but please let me know what your feedback is and if you want to see very specific things uh, tested or reviewed or included in these videos um, that being said I um, do want to take this opportunity to thank Audio Technica Benelux and Genelac again for making sure that I'm able to uh, review these uh, these great speakers by uh, by Genelac. Um, it's a shame I have to send them back, uh, but I st I'm I'm still able to uh, play with them for a couple of more days, and then I'll have to return them. Uh, so if you do have any uh, questions about these uh, that I can still uh, review, just make sure to uh, drop me a line at yesper at the modular clubhouse .nl or uh, just drop, drop me a comment below or reach out through social media, whatever you uh, fancy, of course. And I'll make sure to answer your questions ASAP. Um, I wanted to just quickly take a step back and talk a bit more about the things that I really enjoyed about these uh, 8030Cs. I loved how the actual sound quality um, 
was much better than I initially expected uh, from it uh, because I was of course under the impression that this would in no way shape or form be able to measure itself with for instance the PMC result 6 uh, which is of course a much bigger and uh, of course also a much more expensive uh, monitor than these 8030Cs. Uh, but I was surprised with the, the amount of clarity that this brought. Uh, of course, yeah, you, you will hear the difference between the Result 6 and these, uh, but then the question becomes, what do you need in your home studio? Uh, and I wouldn't just go out and say, well, um, if you've got money to burn, I would always go for the Result 6. No, absolutely not, because in your home studio, even space might be at a premium. So then you might want to think, okay, well, how big of a, a speaker do I want to uh, get into this? And I'm pretty sure that the 8030 Cs that I've been working with right now are really able to, well, to, to fit into any sort of home studio. And if you need them a bit bigger or a bit smaller, uh, you can still find anything else in the 8000 series. Uh, because they have any, everything for any size of uh, studio there too. And of course, if you have a larger studio and if you have money to burn, uh, then there is <laughs> by no means, I would say, uh, don't get the result six. But if you have to be a bit more conscientious about uh, how you're spending your, uh, your hard-earned euros, dollars, pounds sterling or anything else, um, I think that the Genelax are right there at the sweet spot when it comes to um, quality per uh, per dollar, I might say. So that being said, I um, do want to thank everyone again for uh, watching these videos. I want to ask everyone if you've got any uh, feedback, any questions, just let me know. And uh, for now, we'll just say, well, uh, we're in the start of 2022. So I hope everyone has um, still all of their uh, resolutions still uh, active. And I want to uh, wish everyone a very healthy and safe 2022 again. And for now I would say, make sure that we do because uh, that's the only way we can get to it, right? Have a great day. See you for my next video. Cheers, bye.